Greetings, Splunkers and Flunkers. It's Rusty again with the well-anticipated sequel video to Hollow Knight's 10 Worst Charms. And I have to say it... Wait. <laughs> Guys, I... I think something's burning. Positivity! Positivity! We did the 10 Worst Charms a couple weeks ago when everyone hated it. Including me! You know, people have been hitting me up, saying things like, Who are you? Why am I seeing this video in my feed? Or, why are you so depressed? Ah, uh, that's just my character. I promise, guys, I'm fine! <laughs> These are the 10 best charms in Hollow Knight. The best ever. Don't question me. Are you sure? Oh, I'm more than sure. I'm... Positive! He's positive. This video is gonna be positive as fuck. I love you. I'm Rusty and I'm from fucking hell. That's strange. I just smelled something burning a minute ago. Well, whatever it was, it's gone now. So let's get into this video. Starting with maybe not my most favorite, but definitely my first favorite charm I ever used, which is the Soul Catcher. More spell juice per hit, you ask? Why the hell not? Hypothetical audience that totally has the ability to actually answer the questions I'm asking right now in real time. Soul Catcher is a nice charm that fits into just about anywhere, and you'll probably be using it for a long time, considering it can and likely will be the actual first charm you pick up. Its well-rounded usefulness makes it a nice accessory to most builds. It also means you will worry much less about not having resources to heal if you have an aggressive playstyle. And don't get me wrong, rearranging your build a little would totally benefit you in certain fights, but if you're just grinding on enemies or exploring or whatever, there are few charms I'd rather have equipped than the Soul Catcher. At the low, non-committal price of only two charm slots, it's honestly pretty hard to argue against its value. I'm going to try my best to make this next sentence make sense, but no promises. I have the same attitude towards Spell Twister that I do with Soul Catcher, only in different situations. Whenever I was exploring or finding new caves or roads or something, Soul Catcher certainly wasn't the most integral charm in my loadout, but it was definitely the one I found myself using the most often, usually because it helped just enough. And in a lot of boss fights that I felt warranted a good few feet of distance away from, I felt the same way with Spell Twister. If you're just absolutely strapped for charm notches and you just have to make a decision between this and Shaman Stone, for instance, that's a no-brainer and a half right there. But if you've got a pretty snazzy-looking spell build going on with two spaces to spare, then there's really no reason to not add this in. If you have a build that enables you to just jackhammer the B button and soul spam people to death, then the Spell Twister is never something I think you should dismiss. The reduction of resources needed to cast spells just makes too much of a difference, in my opinion, to be ignored. Someone call me up a repairman stat, because holy shit this thing is broken. It's so broken that even the leg eater looks at it and says, Nah, man, are you nuts? I can't fix that, that shit's broken. The fluke nest charm replaces your vengeful soul projectile with a horde of baby flukes, vastly increasing your damage at the expense of consistency and range. Sounds pretty reasonable, you might assume. The flukes do kinda go everywhere when they're on the ground, so I guess not all of them have a chance to land properly. That is, until you realize every boss in Hollow Knight seems to who have contracted a bad case of stand the fuck still and let you hit them disease, and consistency and range aren't really things to consider if you're two inches away from someone else's face. So the fluke nest in that regard is a straight up damage increase and then some. The so-called drawbacks of the charm basically do nothing but give it a slight learning curve to just use correctly. And once you do that, it's DPS City. Slap a shaman stone on this badass and simply watch in amazement as in-game bosses melt and disintegrate before your very eyes. The almighty turn Turnip wizard bows to no one. And pointing out that I've made that joke like 80 times in other videos isn't going to make me not say it. They're turnips, okay? They're flying, rabid, carnivorous vegetables with mouths half the size of their anatomy. It's the stuff of nightmares. And here's where we might run into some disagreements. Dashmaster, aka the charm that makes you go fast as fuck boy, is a criminally underrated charm in my opinion because of its massive mobility boost. Hollow Nest has a lot of curvy, windy caverns you're gonna be backtracking through, and even more so if you get lost often, especially if you're like me and you have the direction sense of a concussed goose with a bag over its head. Dashmaster really cuts down on the amount of time in which you will be doing that. So if you don't foresee running into a lot of combat situations and you're just 
just trying to get from point A to point B in the quickest way possible, it's never really a bad decision to slap this thing on. It can really cut down on the mundanity of making long walks across the kingdom, especially if it's a route you've traveled like 19 times because there's this one dumbass mask shard that you just can't seem to get for some reason. It makes evading much more comfortable in addition to just being the trump card in every speedrunner's arsenal ever. It's one of the first charms you can find in the whole game and it stays just about as useful towards the end game as it was when you picked it up. Quick Focus is another charm that I never really left the bench without, especially during my first run. Quick Focus is also a popular code name for certain opiates in the southwestern US. Nope, no no no, no, don't uh, don't look that up. I'm uh I'm right, don't worry. The healing boost that this thing gives you just makes a massive difference. You can heal at least one or two more masks than you would normally be able to in between certain boss fight attacks, and you can sometimes get away with healing in situations where you just otherwise couldn't without the risk of catching some dude's giant fingernail in your face. Quick Focus is a massively helpful charm for a good majority of bosses, and its usefulness is really only obsolete against quicker bosses like Grim or Pure Vessel, whose windows of downtime or vulnerability are so few and far between that you'd honestly just be better off investing in charms to just out DPS them. Otherwise, there's really no big consequences to having this charm on you if you feel like you can't keep up with the pace of a certain fight. Don't be swayed by its steep charm notch price. It definitely helps in a pinch. The Shaman Stone is a direct DPS upgrade, but to spells instead of melee attacks. Now, some argue that the Shaman Stone really isn't that great by itself and sort of needs a dedicated build to really get value out of it. But keep in mind, you can get this charm pretty early on. And the damage buff this thing gives you is so insane that it actively encouraged me to try out a spell build in the game, even though I've never considered myself a spellcaster sort of player. It seems no matter how hard I try to make a dedicated mage character in Skyrim or Dark Souls or something, this inevitably leads to that. I find this really cool armor and I just, well, I, I just become a knight, like out of nowhere. With Hollow Knight, ever since I started using spell builds, there's honestly no going back. And I think that's because you have charms like like Shaman Stone that makes such a great first impression. Spells already feel powerful enough when you first acquire them, so a charm that enhances their damage even further isn't something I think anyone should pass up. Yes, some people may feel inclined to argue the Shaman Stone is dependent on other spell-related charms and therefore takes a quite a bit of time for you to get value out of it, but honestly, without that huge damage buff just in your face, a lot of players, myself included, probably wouldn't have even considered spells a viable option to begin with. Shaman Stone is the linchpin charm of any spell build, and if you don't like it, then I don't want to talk to you. A spell build without the Shaman Stone is kind of like Kaiba without his blue eyes. Lost, cold, helpless, and alone. Yep, thought we were, uh, thought we were done with Yu-Gi-Oh references on this channel. Nope, still going strong. Nail Master's Glory is a must-have for any melee build, namely due to its ridiculously low slot requirement. This is probably the best single slot charm in the game in my opinion, with Dream Wielder probably taking second place. And spoiler alert, this is the only single slot charm on this entire list. So if you want to know what my opinion is on some of the other single slot charms, then I sure hope your attention span is able to outlast my garbage sense of humor. There's honestly no reason I can think of to not have this charm somewhere in your loadout, at least if you're focused focusing on a melee approach. Nail Master's Glory takes the nail arts you learn from Nail Masters and pretty much just removes their charging duration almost completely. And that's super ultra important because these nail arts aren't exactly top contenders of the annual shortest wind-up time contest. But yeah, unlike some of my jokes, this charm fits in pretty easily wherever you put it. I mean, how the hell can you even hate it? It takes up one charm slot and it never not helps you out. Unbreakable strength. I think I would be asking for a spanking if I didn't put this one on the pedestal it deserved. Unbreakable strength increases your nail strength by 33% of its original attack points, which one, is incredibly badass, and two, makes me sound like a Yu-Gi-Oh duelist whenever I say its effect, so it gets extra points there as well. My favorite part about this charm just so happens to be its most unequivocally broken feature, which is the ability to take it into dream fights with you while in its fragile stage. And the largest drawback of fragile charms, of course, being they're, you know, fragile. They break 
and you can't use them if you die and you have to go get them fixed and stuff. But dream fights don't officially count as death since you're, you know, dreaming and stuff. So even in its fragile stage, this charm does not break upon being defeated in a dream battle, which is pretty damn nice. Because then you can just re-nail the bastard, wash, rinse, try again, and probably even get killed again too because you suck. Any melee build would be lost without the prime effects of unbreakable strength. You would be lost down the back of the fridge with a flashlight and a map without this charm. And pairing it with a charm like Quick Slash throttles up your damage even further. Basically what I'm trying to say is, a melee build without Quick Slash or unbreakable strength is kinda like Kaiba without his blue eyes white- Alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna stop now. Oh hey, look at that, another nail-related charm. At the mere cost of three charm slots, you can extend your nail outwards to nearly twice its normal length for those hard-to-reach places. This is another one of those charms that are just so goddamn convenient that it's hard to imagine any scenario that wouldn't benefit from its value. On top of it just being a souped-up version of the long nail charm at the expense of one extra charm notch, nail-lengthening charms also give you an advantage on certain platforming sections, specifically nail pogoing across certain gaps and trenches. Mark of Pride is great to have in these situations just because of how wide it opens up your error of margin for timing down strikes. It's also just a convenient thing to have on you because timing your attacks is kinda important in a lot of these boss battles. As a simple shorthand, I've dubbed this charm the MOP because of how spotlessly clean those hollow nest floors are gonna be after you're done wiping them down with your enemies. It's kind of at this point where I have to acknowledge the general consensus regarding charms in this game is that each charm charm does have its own uses and capabilities that make it more desirable than others in certain situations. But I mean, you know what dude, listen, if you have three extra charm notches and you go for Grubberfly Elegy over Mark of Pride, I'm, I'm allowed to ask questions, okay? Just putting this as simply and as bluntly as I can, if you have three extra charm slots available and you aren't using it for quick slash, then I hope I never meet you in person, because you don't sound like someone I'd get along with anyways. There's not a single charm build I can think of where quick slash doesn't fit into. Increasing the frequency of your attacks unlocks a pretty wide array of aggressive playstyles, getting more sold by the second so you can cast spells and or heal more often in addition to it just being a straight up DPS and increase, slap a soul catcher charm and watch your soul gauge rocket to the top in like two seconds, or pair it up with a strength charm and just start mowing through baddies like the insectoid meat grinder that you are. It's such a great charm that an early patch even brought up the cost from two to three charm slots, and people still consider it a necessity for just about any build you can think of. Even with the cost increase, there's still only a couple other three slot charms out there that even come close to the value Quick Slash is able to give you unequivocally the best charms in Hollow Knight. Because Rusty said so. And Rusty doesn't give a Frenchman's fuck if you think Rusty curses too goddamn much because Rusty is from the fires of hell. Rusty is not a kid-friendly creator. And here in about a month or so, I guess I'm gonna have to start saying that in all of my videos anyway, so I might as well just go ahead and get into that habit. And that may mean saying as many curses and profanities in the smallest time window possible to further establish that I am in fact not kid friendly. So in that case, thanks for tuning into The Forge. I'm Rusty, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. And there. That should, uh, that should take care of it.